All right, so in part one of this tutorial, we set up our stage for our animation here, and uh, we got it looking really nice. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add, uh, add all the animation and all uh, the design elements into the shot. Uh, so let's see here. I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our plain paper, our, our background there. I think maybe we'll just bump it up to be a little bit brighter because we're going to want we're going to want this thing to be pretty bright. Okay, uh, let's go into our animation stage here. We'll drill through uh, to this bottom layer. Now we can turn these things off because these were these squares were just for examples. Um, so let's go ahead and um, let's create some types. So let's cr uh, grab the type selection tool there. And I'm going to type Evermore because this is all I've been thinking about for the past two months. So uh, might as well just keep on this track. Um, all right, maybe make it a bit bigger. Fill most of the screen here. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pre-compose this. So I'll just call this type. Now let's go into this layer here, and I'm not gonna do anything fancy to this type. I'm just gonna keep it real simple, just a real nice little uh, little tiny animation going on it. On it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a mask around this O right here. There we go, and I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and. Now I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to, uh, on the bottom layer, I'm going to set the mask mode to subtract. So now I just have this O by itself up here. So I'll rename this layer O just so I know that's what it is. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go up to my effects up here. I'm going to go to transition and I'm going to go to radial wipe. And you'll see the center marker uh, in the middle of the comp here, but we actually want to move that to the center of the O because we're going to do a little bit of a radial wipe on this O here. So if I uh, twirl the transition completion right now, it's, you'll see that it's uh, working like we want it to. We can change the start angle of it. Maybe we'll change it so it's uh, starting on this side over here. I think we'll have our transition completeness. Uh, well, what just happened? Oh, somehow that got moved. Uh, let me check, put that back there. I'll have it start at about 40%. So I'll uh, go to the beginning of the timeline and I'll click a keyframe for the transition completion. Maybe I'll go to, I don't know, maybe, maybe, mm, maybe like five seconds and I'll put it to zero. So if I hit U on the keyboard while on the layer, it'll show me my new keyframes there. I'll go ahead and pick the second one and hit F9 on it to make it an easy ease keyframe. And I think I'll right click on the keyframe and go to keyframe velocity. I think I'll have it be a little smoother coming in, maybe something like 55. And that'll just make the approach uh, a little bit smoother so it's, uh, so it's really easing into it there. The higher the number there, uh, the smoother it's going to be. So it'll start out quicker and then it'll end slower. Um, okay, so that's about it for that layer there. I think that's we're not going to get too fancy on that layer there. Um, there are going to be some other elements into the scene. Uh, if if you uh, click on, there's going to be a link to some clouds in the project uh, description below. So click on the link to get the clouds. And go ahead and download the project files to get the uh, grass layer. We're going to need both the cloud layer and the grass layer, so bring those on in. Okay, so I went ahead and imported the grass layer and the sky layer there. And I cleaned up my comp a little bit. I made a folder and put a, put a, a bunch of the stuff except for the main comp inside of it just so we could clean it up a bit here. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to drag the grass uh, image into the make a new composition button and zoom out a bit here it's a rather big file 
Okay, what we're going to do to this is, I, I don't want the grass to be flat here. I want it to be kind of rounded, because we want it to look like it's on a, a nice round little hill. Um, so, we need to add a distortion effect to it to get that uh, uh, sort of curved shape to the grass. So go to Effect, go to Distort, and let's go to Mesh Warp. Now, I don't need all these rows and columns. I only need two and two. That's going to do it for us. So then you're going to want to grab the middle handle on both sides and then just drag it down. Just drag it down. And then we're also going to want to adjust the handles here so that um, we get a nicer shape to our hill here. We could drag. We could grab these two uh, middle points here, and we can drag these up as well, so that we're getting that sort of curved look to the hill there. And that should be fine, I think. Um, so let's go back to our um, our main comp. And then let's go to our animation stage again all the way down uh, to the bottom layer. We don't need to go into the type layer. The type layer is going to be pre-composed. We can leave that as it is. And let's go ahead and, gra and drag the grass into this composition with the type here, our animation layer composition. And I'm also going to add a camera and uh, 20, put it at 28 millimeters. And make sure that your camera is set to one node, not two node. Um, two nodes going to cause some issues if you're trying to pan through the uh, composition. Um, so keep it to one. Um, let's click OK. Uh, let's hit. I'm going to hit F4 on my keyboard, which is going to change the toggle switches modes. And you can also push this button down here. But it's easier to just push F4. Um, so I'm going to make these items that I just uh, dragged in. I'm going to make them 3D by clicking their 3D buttons there. I'm also going to scale down my grass layer because it's pretty big. And it's and it's big because we're going to be um, we're going to be pushing the camera through it so that it it does kind of need to be big because uh because it's going to get pretty close to the camera. Um, so I'm just positioning it where I think I'm just kind of guessing where I think I want it right now. <clears throat> I'm going to shrink my type layer a bit, maybe 80%. I'm also going to push it back, because I know it's going to be back in the scene. The camera is going to be pushing through this grassy hill, and the logo is going to be in the background. So uh, we'll just leave it there for now. I'm going to uh, hit Command-D and duplicate this grass layer. I'm going to hit P to bring up the position, and I'm going to drag it towards me. And I'm going to drag it towards me, I think, maybe like a it's going to be at minus 125 and uh, what I'm trying to do here is layer the grass so that it um, it looks nice and full so that it doesn't look flat but it actually looks like a three-dimensional grassy field here or as close as we can get to it in After Effects I'm gonna hit command D on that again and I'm gonna do the same thing I'll pull the next layer another 125 back so it'll be at negative 250 and uh, you just want to place it so you can see a, a little bit of the blades uh, when you're pulling it close to the camera. I'm going to do the same thing again. And I'm going to pull it towards me. Yeah, this is looking good here. I'll do it again. Negative 450. Oh yeah, now we're right next to the camera and that's good. That's going to be the real dynamic looking layer. So if I click on my camera and I click hit P, I'll set a, a keyframe for the uh, starting position of the camera. And I'm going to drag that and hold shift. I'm dragging the keyframe, holding shift, so that it will snap to the beginning of the timeline there. And then I'm just going to drag the Z value of, of this uh, camera layer so that we're pushing in uh, towards the logo here. And this is going to look real nice. Um, 
Okay. You know, this back layer right here is pretty much all I'm seeing because uh, it's covering up all the grass in front of it. So I'm going to uh, try to push that down a bit. I'm going to push it down so that I can see the other grass um, as well. Maybe bring it up a bit. It's going to take some finesse trying to get all the layers so that um, so that one's not completely blocking the other. Um, let's see here. I'm just just going to try moving these guys around a bit, um, trying to get something that I like. That might work pretty well there. Um, I can see all the blades moving as I'm moving through here. And uh, yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go to this last, um, last keyframe right here. And uh, actually I'll go, I'll go all the way to the end to like the 10 second mark. And I'll keep pushing the camera forward a bit because I want the uh, the motion of the camera to keep to keep going. And now I'm going to move my type back because it's uh, it's way too close, much too close to the camera here. So we're pushing in. Yeah, it still still needs to go back. That looks about right there. So here's one of the the nice little uh, nice little tip in After Effects that I I wish I would have known a long time ago because it's one of it's one of the coolest uh, ways of keyframing in After Effects. Um, I'm gonna select this keyframe right here, and I'm gonna hit Command on it, and I'm gonna hit Command and click on it. And what that does is it it you should see it change to a um, a spherical keyframe rather than the uh, diamond shape one. If I click it again, it'll turn it off. But if I click it again, it'll turn to the sphere. So you can you can turn it off at any time if you want. Um, I'm, I don't know what the name of this keyframe is. Uh, I probably should have looked it up. But uh, basically, what it does is it it takes the velocity of the uh, the incoming uh, whatever motion is here, and it takes the velocity on uh, this side of the motion here, which is leading up to this keyframe, and it sort of smooths in between them. So it's making a nice gentle um, velocity change between uh, both sides of, of the action here. So you can see that uh, when it hits that keyframe, you don't see a, a, a jerk or anything. It's it's real nice and smooth, and that just uh, that's what this keyframe does. Is it kind of smooths over, uh, uh, or I should say, it smooths between keyframes. So um, this is looking all right here. Okay, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some rotation to this camera. Because I wanted to start looking down at the grass so that it's sort of panning up to it. Um, maybe I'll go to maybe like five seconds. And I'll set keyframes for all the rotations there because I'm going to be messing with all of them. I'm going to drag the X rotation into the negative, pushing the camera um, so it's looking down at the grass. I'm also going to push it a little bit to the side, maybe negative five. And then for the rotation, maybe like negative two. That might work well. So now our, our camera's sort of panning down. And I think I'm going to push the X rotation all the way down so that it's, it's completely, uh, there's, no, there's going to be nothing there um, at, this, at the start of the animation. All right, T here. I'll select all of those end keyframes and I'll hit F9 on them. Um, I'm going to right click on those keyframes with all of them selected, go to keyframe velocity. And I'm gonna uh, make these a lot smoother on the uh, incoming velocity. I'll put it to 60. 
And that's gonna make it real nice and smooth because the default F9 Easy Ease sometimes is just not smooth enough, I don't, I don't find. Um, okay, so if we go back into our main comp and see what, uh, see what this is gonna look like um, uh, in, our, in our main composition, And uh, that paint texture is showing through, and it's it's uh, it's looking real nice, I think. So let's check this out here. All righty. That looks pretty good. Um, sometimes, uh, because our, our frame rate is uh, set to 12 frames per second that we did in the last um, tutorial, uh, the 12 frames a second, it can sometimes make quick movement uh, look kind of kind of jerky. Um, so what I might have to do is I might have to go back into this layer here, and uh, maybe I'll make the um, all the rotation keyframes. Maybe I'll make them take a little bit longer. And maybe this will get rid of some of the um, the the stuttering in the uh, in the motion, and it's a tough balance because that's part of this whole look is the stuttery kind of uh, feel of it. But you also don't want it to be hard on the eyes either. So you got to sort of push and pull and find a nice balance between them. Let's check that out. Um, this is looking okay. You know, something I'm not happy about, there's too much distance between the type and the grass here. I want it to sort of look, uh, I don't know, I just want it to be closer to the grass there. So I, I don't exactly know how I'm going to make that happen here, but that's what I want. I'm just gonna try grabbing all the grass and um, pulling up on the Y. Let's see what happens then. Now I'm going to be sort of pushing through the grass here, which um, I don't mind. You know, when you're when you're moving through layers like this, sometimes you can get some pop as you move through one layer. So it's important to find little holes to make holes. Like I'm trying to make a hole right here uh, for the grass to go through, so that we aren't actually going through any of the blades of grass, but we're sort of finding little holes and pockets to move the camera through. Um, let's see that. All right, so this is looking uh, more dynamic. I like it, I like it better here. I think I'm actually gonna go back into my keyframes here and maybe, um, maybe I'll increase the, uh, the velocity that they're coming in at just because uh, I want it to be super smooth uh, on there on the in incoming velocity and I think I, I don't need to preview that, that again I think um, I'll just trust that that looks good okay um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're uh, we are gonna add some clouds to this and this is sort of gonna be our backdrop so I'm going to take that skies um, layer, and uh, it was skies, it was number two on the page there, so it doesn't really matter which sky picture you pick on those, but I just picked number two, I believe, I think that's what the two's there for, so if you want the same one, you could um, grab that one. I'm going to take that layer and drag it into a new composition here, and... Uh, you got two choices um, modifying this sky layer here because what I want to do is I want to sort of cut an edge on the clouds so that I can have a, a clean edge on the clouds so I can sort of layer them and uh, give them some depth. And you can either do this in Photoshop, which I, I did for my original clouds that I uh, modified in Evermore. But uh, just for the sake of speed, I'm just going to grab my 
pen tool here and I'm just going to um, just going going to draw a quick mask around uh, the cloud layer here and I'm just gonna be cutting a line across here and I'm gonna try to look for uh, natural breaks in the uh, in the clouds here but you don't have to be too exact with this it'll be pretty forgiving the 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 final look okay once I've drawn that line I'm gonna go to my mask by hitting M I'll hit MM on it to, to open up the mask properties here um, and I'm going to increase my feather here so that we can get um, a nice smooth edge to the uh, to these clouds here because we want them to sort of all blend into one another okay uh, once I got that um, let's see here where is my main composition I'm gonna start closing up some of these layers here that I don't need um, sometimes it can get a little bit out of control with how many uh, composition tabs you have open here so I'm just gonna try to make it look a little bit cleaner there we go now I can see what's going on here so I'm on my animation layer here and I'm gonna take that uh, sky layer that we just uh, cut out and I'm gonna put that into my composition here and uh, I'm gonna make it 3D and it disappears because it's actually um, behind the camera right now so I need to hit P on my keyboard and I need to push it forward here and uh, what I'm gonna be doing right here is I'm gonna be adding a lot of these cloud layers to this uh, shot right here I'm going to scale this down a bit. It's looking a little bit too big for me. And I'm going to duplicate that layer again. I'm going to hit P and I'm going to drag it back into space. And um, let's see here. I'm going to blow this one up a little bit more you know I might actually rotate this one around here so that we can have sort of clouds both above and below this layer that are um, that are gonna sort of make a frame around this type here I'm gonna duplicate it again push it back and we're just gonna keep doing this over and over until you're sick of it and you can't do it anymore and then you can stop um, but really I just want to add a lot of layers here so that gives a lot of depth when we're moving in on this shot here duplicate it again push it back push it back push it back way back and um, scale it up, move it, keep doing this, keep doing this, duplicate, push it back, rotate it, duplicate. I think this might be the last layer that I'm willing to do here. I'm going to push this one pretty far back here. I want this to be like the very distant clouds. I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna rotate it. Okay, so I think we got some good looking clouds here and if we sort of move them, scrub through our timeline like this, you can see some interesting stuff uh, starting to happen, some parallaxing between the clouds. Um, I think I'm gonna add one more layer in the front here because I I really want to see this stuff moving around so I'm gonna add another one right in the front here 
that guy to be right, right in front. Cool. Yeah, this is this is starting to give it some good depth. Okay, but there there is a serious there is a huge problem that we're gonna have right now because if we go back to our main composition after adding all this stuff and look at it, that's uh, that, that's exactly what it looks like there. So it, it looks terrible, and the reason it looks terrible is because uh, there's no alpha going on in this animation layer. It's just it's completely solid because these these clouds are solid and this type is solid right here. So we have to figure out a way to add an alpha to uh, our clouds right here. And so this is going to be how we're going to do it. Uh, once we're 100% sure how we want our camera move right here, uh, you can keep tweaking it if you're not happy with it because you it's it's not really set in stone, but it's going to be a little it's a little bit more difficult to change the camera move after we do this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the camera. I'm going to select the camera and all the sky layers, uh, selecting them with Shift. I'm going to hit Command Shift C and I'm going to pre-compose them. I'll just call this clouds. Okay, and I'm going to drag them behind my type here. Actually, I'm going to drag them behind my grass too. It needs to be behind everything there. So nothing really seems to have changed right now. Oh, look at that. I see a problem with our clouds right there. Um, we'll fix that in a second. But since we pre-composed um, our clouds, um, and we did so with the camera, if we wouldn't have pre-composed them with the camera, it would have gotten really weird looking. So that's why we had to duplicate the camera. Because now if I go back into this clouds layer here, I got my camera moving here, and uh, my clouds are moving and looking great. Uh, we need a, I need to expand these layers a little bit in the back because um, they're not big enough right now. So let's see here. I gotta find uh, that one too. All right. So you might you might have the same problem. I don't know. Maybe yours is fine. Um, I'm gonna scale these up just a little bit. Let's see if we're covered now. Yeah, it looks like we're uh, we're good to go now. Okay, um, there's going to be a lot of pre-composing in this project here. If you haven't noticed already, uh, we're actually going to be pre-composing this inside of the clouds uh, composition here. We're going to be pre-composing this all again. I don't care about the name for this, it doesn't matter. And this is why uh, we just pre-compose that. I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to hit F4 to make sure that I'm on my, I have my track mat option. Um, you just need to be able to see this, so either select that tab or hit F4. I'm going to go to track mat, and I'm going to go to Luma Mat Inverted. And uh, we'll select that. And now, uh, if I cl click the toggle transparency thing here, we can see now that we're getting some alpha on this uh, on this shot, and that's that's what we needed in order to be able to see it. So if we go back to our main composition right now, now we can uh, actually see our uh, our clouds and our type, and we're we're starting to uh, get where we need to go here. Um, it's not quite perfect right now, uh, but we'll we'll keep working on this. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to open a new comp viewer. So I'm going to click that, go to new comp viewer, and then I'm going to go uh, back into my um, my clouds layer, I think, and I'm going to go back into this pre comp too. So we're going all the way back to the layer with the camera and the sky layers here that's animated. I'm going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer to this scene. I'm going to add a, um, let's go with a levels adjustment on this. You know, you can either use curves or levels. Uh, sometimes when I just want to add contrast, like quick and dirty contrast, I uh, use the levels adjustment. Uh, if I want to do like fine tuning stuff, I'll use the curves adjustment. And uh, I'm going to drag up the both ends of the 
of the levels adjustment here so that I'm getting some contrast on my on my shot here. Um, and I'm also going to add a tint layer because I don't want to see any of that color yet. We're going to be adding our own uh, really bright blue color to it, but for now, I don't want to see it. Um, let's see here. I'm going to bring down the whites a bit because I uh, we that our type actually is going to be white here, so we don't want to want our background to have too many hot white spots on it. Uh, otherwise, it'll be very difficult to read. All right, so that looks good there. Uh, let's go up a few layers um, to our animation layer here with our clouds pre-comp in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that blue color uh, that was on our squares that I hadn't deleted yet. And if you deleted it, it's not a big deal. We're just going to be adding a blue color to it, this really, this really bright blue, cyan blue here. So I'm going to uh, copy and paste the fill that's on that, and I'm going to copy and paste it on the clouds. And if you just need to add a fill, if you didn't have that, just go to Generate and go to Fill. And then just add a real nice uh, blue color to it. So now we're getting to see some of uh, the final uh, look of this piece here, which is going to be that bright blue color. Um, the next thing I'll, I think I'll do is I'll, I'll make it so the type is white. Um, so I think I'll try to keep this composition over here because I, I really like to be able to see what it looks like in the final composition when I'm working. Um, it's a nice way to work, but a lot of times it can get a little cramped with all these windows open, but I think we'll be all right. Um, let's see, what do I need to do here? Okay, so my type layer. Uh, for this, for, for the way that we're gonna make this white, because you can see the type is white right now, but ultimately the color of the type doesn't matter because uh, it's just using the alpha of that paint texture layer. Um, so the only way we're gonna be able to get white type is to actually knock it out of uh, of this whole scene here. So we need to knock out the type out of the clouds background and uh, and basically out of every layer in order to make sure that this Evermore right here is um, transparent. Because when it's transparent, that means the background's gonna show through on our main comp. So I'm gonna select the type there. I'm gonna hit F4 to get to my modes because I need to see my modes here. And I'm gonna click on modes. And I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to select uh, Silhouette Alpha. Boom, right there. So what Silhouette Alpha does is um, we needed to make sure our layer was on the, on the very top here because what it does when you put it to Silhouette Alpha is it takes the alpha of the layer and it basically knocks it out out of everything below it. So um, Silhouette Alpha, and that's gonna knock it out. That's perfect uh, looking right there. I drag down on the timeline. This is looking good here. Now we're having, uh, our type looks really good here, uh, but the gray grass looks a little weird right here. I think it's gonna look uh, pretty cool if the grass is white. Um, so we're gonna have to figure out a way to knock the grass out of the cloud layer as well. Um, now you can really, it gets tricky when you, when you try to have multiple uh, layers uh, with silhouette alphas on them. Let's see if it's gonna work here. It looks like it's, it is gonna work here, but uh, depending on your layer order, uh, you might run into some issues there sometimes. Um, so just set all the grass uh, to silhouette alpha as well. And, and order is very important when you're working with this sort of silhouette uh, alpha business. So it's gotta be type, and then the grass, and then the clouds there. So now that we got that, let's check out our our, uh, our comp, see how it's looking. Okay, so let's check this out. Boom. That looks good, and you can see the, the clouds parallaxing in the background. You can see that there's some good depth on them. And, uh, man, I don't, I don't know if I'll change anything about this. This looks, this looks really nice. Um, let's see. Sometimes I just watch things over and over again, just thinking, can I add anything? And you know, most of the time I add stuff and then I just go, eh, 
that was too much. It it was unnecessary, you know, just because I feel like I should add more just to uh, get my paycheck, you know, because it's like, <laughs> I feel like I got I to gotta earn it, so I got to keep adding stuff to it. But a, a lot of the time it's, uh, you know, less is more here. Hmm, anything else to do to this? Um, we we could, uh, just, I'm just curious to see how this looks if I turn off the color layer, because the reason why all the blue is showing through is because we have this color layer right here. And if I turn it off, we just get a straight up, uh, just black and white thing here, which I don't know, de depending on what you're going for, you may or may not want color. Or we could also uh, try try a different color here we could experiment um, let's see what some orange clouds look like okay that's weird looking maybe yellow actually it looks kind of green um, I don't know purple clouds who doesn't like purple clouds okay me I don't like purple clouds all right let me undo that nope <laughs> stick with your gut you know of course clouds should be blue. You know, I think if there was anything I was going to change to this, yeah, I might, um, I, we're seeing really the tail end of, uh, of this little O animation here, so maybe I'll go in and, uh, and push, push the start of the, this O animation back, because really we're starting to see it about here, and by that point it's pretty much all the way done. Um, so let me go back and tweak this. Push it back two seconds or so. And uh, let's see here. Let's see how that looks. All right, yeah, I think, yeah, I definitely like being able to see the uh, more of that O animation because really there's not too much going on in this scene and that's that's really just, <laughs> That's it for like the animation going on in it. So, uh, all right, so I think we'll uh, leave it here. I think we're at a good point in this project. Um, I hope you guys had fun with this one. I had fun doing this one, and uh, it's cool to be able to give you guys a little bit of an insight into my process and how I work. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next time.